Welcome back to VTU eShikshana Learning Platform. In this video, we will going to discuss regarding controlled access methods. Under this title, we will going to discuss regarding three controlled access methods. One is reservation method, second one is polling method, third one is token passing method. In controlled access, the station consult one another to find which station has right to send. A station cannot send unless it has been authorized by the other stations. So to begin with, we will discuss regarding reservation technique. In reservation method, a station needs to make a reservation before sending the data. The time here is divided into a intervals. In each interval, there will, there will be a reservation frame uh, preceded with the data frames that is set in, sent in the interval. So, you see here, this is our reservation frame and data frames will follow this reservation frame in this particular time interval. Now, this in the, this reservation frame, say, which consists of, say, n mini slots, which are meant for, say, station to reserve their time slot. Each mini slot here, it belongs to a one station. When station needs to send a data frame, it makes its reservation in its own mini slot. The stations that have made a reservation can send their data frame uh, behind this reservation frame. Okay. So, in this example, you see the station 1, station 3 and station 4 reserve their time slots. For transmission of data. So, these bits which are set by these stations, okay, in this uh, reservation frame, allows them to send the data immediately after this reservation frame. Okay, so in this during during this time interval, only these three stations are allowed to transmit because they reserved their time slots in this reservation frame. This is the reservation frame which allows the station to transmit. Which station has to transmit? It will be decided by the reservation that is done by the station. Okay. So, in this case, in the second time slot, you see the station 1 only has reserved the time slot. So, it is only has a right to send the data. Now, this is what is an arrangement which helps us to avoid the collision. In this method, there is no question of collision arises because the stations are reserving their time slots before transmitting the data. The next technique is polling technique. Now, this polling technique is more suitable say in the environment where one device is designated as a primary station and others are acting like a secondary stations. So, here in this arrangement, all the data gets exchanges through only a primary device. Now, basically, the job of this primary device is to control the link. Whereas, the job of a secondary device is to follow the instructions of primary device. Now, to carry out this particular exercise or to carry out this data transfer uh, in this type of arrangement, Primary station uses two functions. One is a select function. The second one is poll function. We will first discuss regarding the select function. Now, the select function is basically used here by the primary station when it wants to send some data to the secondary. So, with the help of this, it will going to select the specific secondary device for transmitting the data to it. So, in this arrangement, the select function is helping the primary to select 
the specific secondary device to send its data. That means, you are now assigning a duty to a secondary device to receive the data. Okay. So, this has been done with the help of select function or a select frame. Now, whenever a station B, which is a secondary station, which is ready to accept the data from the primary, it will acknowledge that. So, once it acknowledges, then the primary will send the data. Now, see here the job of a secondary station is to receive only the data. Okay. So, this select function makes these secondary stations only as a receiver over here. Okay. The next frame that is pole frame, pole frame or a pole function okay, basically is used for the primary device to select the secondary device or say solicit the secondary device, uh, uh, sorry, uh, to identify the secondary device for transmitting the data. Okay. Now, this will, the pole function here is identifying the secondary which is allowed to transmit. Now, the pole, pole function here provides an ability for a send, uh, secondary station to transmit the data. Select function whereas, help, uh, identifying the secondary station to receive the data whereas, pole function is identifying the secondary device to transmit the data. Now, whichever the secondary device has a ready with the data, okay, whenever it gets the pole function, pole frame, it is allowed to transmit. Now, see in this example, so we have a two secondary stations SA and SB, whereas the primary station first it tries to select SA for transmission, transmitting the data. Since SA does not have anything to transmit, it will reply back to a primary with a negative acknowledgement or no acknowledgement. Now, when it selects the second station that is SP, it has something to send. So, it sends the data as soon as it gets the pole function. Now, here the data that is sent by the secondary will act like a say acknowledgement or kind of acknowledgement for the pole function. Now, pole function and select function basically providing certain rights for the secondary to carry out different transmission activity. Okay. Now, after all this, the moment the primary gets the data in a proper health and all, it will go to acknowledge the same to the secondary. Okay. Next uh, controlled access technique is token passing technique. In token passing method, the station in a network is organized in the logical rings. Here all the stations are organized in the logical rings fashion. Basically, logical ring here means every station will going to have a predecessor and a successor. The predecessor in this arrangement is a station which is logically before the station in the ring and the successor is the station which is after that station in the ring. Say for example, so this is my station, yes. So this will be the predecessor which is say before the station and after the station, the station one which comes, it will be its successor. Okay. So, predecessor and successor, arranging the all stations or all machines in this fashion leads to a creation of a logical ring.
Now we will see different logical ring and physical ring topologies. So, not it is necessary that all the time stations are required to be arranged in the logical ring form. Sometimes it is also possible to arrange them in the physical ring form. Okay. In physical ring environments also, we use a token passing techniques for transmission of data. So, we will see certain topologies of logical rings and a physical ring. Now, in this physical ring arrangement, so the station 3 is a predecessor of station 1 and station 2 is a successor of a station 1. So, where these are say physically placed, okay. So, a station 3 is uh, behind 1, whereas station 2 is in front of 1. So, this is how we have arranged these stations in a physical fashion, in a physical topology, okay. Whereas, in case of logical ring, we are defining who is a predecessor and who is a successor of some particular station, okay. So, many other times, okay. So, to achieve better performance and all, we go for dual ring arrangements. In a dual ring, we will go to have a two rings, okay. In case if one ring fails, the other ring will take the load and it will allow the whole communication to continue without any disruption, okay. Basically, when we arrange uh, these stations in the ring form in a, phys in a physical manner, in case something goes wrong with any of this link, okay, whole system will going to go down. Now, to avoid these type of a catastrophic situations where if one link fails, whole ring will going to fail. To avoid that type of a situation, we go for dual ring arrangements in which uh, say if one ring fails, other will go, ring will going to take the load. Basically, in dual ring, that second or sometimes we also call it as the auxiliary ring, which operates in a reverse direction compared to that of the main ring. So, here we will going to have one ring as a main ring and another ring as a say secondary ring or auxiliary ring. So, basically, as I said, most of the times, this secondary ring will be used in emergency situations. So, such as the situation where the, whenever there is a primary failure of a primary ring, okay, that time the secondary ring will be used for the communication purpose. The best example for say dual ring is the FDDI, FDDI. So, that means say fiber distributed data interface and CDDI, CDDI, which means copper distributed data interface. Okay. So, these type of a rings they use a dual ring arrangements for data transmission, okay. The next is bus topology, okay. So, many a times we also call it as a token bus arrangement. So, here the stations are connected to a single cable, okay, to the single cable in this way, but say 
here we are creating the logical ring. Now here you see when you look at the physical arrangement of these stations, all of them they are getting connected to the common uh, say cable. Okay. But whereas we are creating the ring over here with the help of logical arrangement. We are defining who is the predecessor of one, who is the successor of one. Similarly, for all stations, say for example, station 2, the predecessor will going to be 1, successor will going to be 4. So, like this, for each and every station in the topology, there will be a, some predecessor and a successor. These type of a definitions will help us to create the logical ring.